Hey guys, it's Jamie Garrett here. I just wanted to share a video trying to maybe help some newer YouTubers try to get from level one to level two. So this is a discussion and where we go in, where I'm going to go into what I've been working on and how I have been growing my channels. I have a channel with 78 subscribers and four other channels, each with almost 10 subscribers each. And it's nothing to write home about, but yeah, I'm, I'm running five channels and they are, I've um, committed to try to make one piece of content a day. And so far I've done that for all of them, except I've missed a couple of days on a couple of channels because of time constraints or things coming up in my life. But though in doing this, um, I've learned a couple things and I, I'm going to kick this dead horse all the time is uh, quantity over quality. Uh, but to try to explain what I've been learning from this uh, experience so far is that it's not necessarily what I'm making that's important, but how I'm making it. Since starting my this run of YouTube and forcing myself to make these five pieces of content a day, it's been more about what I needed to do to make myself even able to achieve that goal, uh, crappy videos or not. And that's been uh, leading to me creating more and more efficient systems to just even meet the bare minimum of this goal. Um, yes, my videos suck. You can look through all of them. They're not very good. Uh, but I noticed things are getting better. Uh, not so much in the quality, but more so in eliminating activities that are just eating up all of my time that I would should be using to make better content. And really, they've been wasting so much time, honestly, that I could not make a good video if I wanted to. I've been uh, scrolling on YouTube, looking, obsessing over analytics, obsessing over what other people's strategies are, hyper-obsessing over all these little details, educating myself all this time, but not actually doing anything. So in doing these five different videos, I have been able to really cut the bull crap and just get the bare necessities done. You know what I mean? It would be like, it's like running a marathon. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're running a marathon and you've never ran a marathon before. You're going to be putting in a lot of miles and you're going to be really optimizing every step facing new walls that your brain has never really reached before. I ran cross country. So that's kind of why I went there. When I started to put on uh, long distance miles, you had to like fight yourself every step and it kind of just stripped you down to like, um, the bare bone thoughts that you were allowed, allowing yourself to have to maintain pace, focusing on your breath, um, just like cutting out all of the all the chum. So I wrote some bullet points here. Let me try to find them really quick. And if not, I'll just cut real quick. Oh, right. Yeah, I had a, a cool one liner. And it was, um, I think I said at the beginning, but you, when you make, you spend a lot of time, like my first YouTube experience is I spent a lot of time making my thumbnail, trying to find all the tools, get all these things, writing a script at work all day, shooting multiple times, spending like an hour editing a five minute video, trying to put in all these all cool overlays, all these different effects, all these different things, high effort activities, um, looking up like what I need to do to make the best title, the best da 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 da, da all this da da, et cetera, et cetera. You get my point. Um, I'd spend maybe like 10 hours to get one video done and just like watching it again and again and again and again to make these, uh, this point. And then when I put it on the YouTube, I maybe got like 10 views and it was like one guy saying that this sucks or something. I don't know. So like my point there is that you make a YouTube video and you have really high expectations for it. And those expectations come crashing down because you're not Mr. Beast or you're not PewDiePie. And then you get extremely discouraged and now you have to face that discouragement and fight it over again. But flipping that into the system where I've been running five channels, trying to make the bear, like meet content or meet uh, quantity goals where I have to meet a deadline and get a <laughs> good enough product out. Um, I'm not trying to judge my content too hard, uh, but it's, it's, it's all cringe when I put it on the internet. It's super difficult, but I just got to get it done just because that's the goals I set for myself. Um, what it's been doing is it's been <laughs> giving me zero expectation so that if I got one view on a video, I feel like I've just won a million bucks. Like I, I had one video hit 60 views and it was just kind of me giving an opinion on some drama that was going on, but it was a crap. It was crap. Uh, but that's been kind of a, uh, an experience. So then to put it into perspective about like what I'm doing and the volume I'm doing, uh, we'll be doing looking forward and we'll, I'll do another, I guess I could do more of these just to check back in to see how I'm doing. Um, so far I've only gotten a few subscribers on each of the channels and 
I'm doing pretty decent in the uh, analytics. Like uh, my CTR is doing pretty well. So my thumbnails are okay. And my titles are okay. My retention, when people do click, it's it's about two and a half minutes to three minutes. Um, depending on the channel. I think like... I think it varies a little bit. Uh, the main channel, I've been noticing my retention has been growing. It's been going like at least half to almost 70% of the video, most people are saying. Or whatever. I don't remember off the top of my head. But So the volume I will be doing, to put this in perspective of what you're up against, if you're a, if you're a normal YouTube creator starting from scratch, not having any background in any of this, like me, a brand new newbie, uh, if you do one video a week, you're going to get 52 videos a year. And you're going to gain skills doing that. And you're going to be able to probably easily manage that. But if I'm able to complete my goal, I will be doing 365 videos in a year on one channel. And then if I hit my goal, I should be doing 1,825 videos in a year. So I feel like that's going to produce very drastically different results than the uh, cookie cutter um, methods that a lot of the YouTube tips channels have been uh, perpetuating. I think they're, you know, they're coming from all from a good place and I've looked up a bunch of tips and a bunch of stuff like that. And, uh, they, they all have pretty decent tips, but they are, they all are very safe. And I just kind of would like to be, or to present this as a, uh, uh, a challenge to people to challenge yourself, fail harder, um, so that you overcome bigger challenges, bigger mistakes. And then therefore, like normally when I look at uh, nature, when you solve a bigger problem, you get a bigger reward. So that's kind of where I'm going at here. Um, so that's just a quick video, quick, uh, quick little tip, quick little strategy, quick little like where I'm at. Uh, maybe I can do a video down the line showing like growth in a month or something like that, uh, that you can look forward to or something. And I'm excited. And I hope this helps somebody put it into perspective, like how to maybe like Restrategize. I just wanted to kind of give a different, unique approach to the YouTube creation. And I, I didn't want to become a tips channel, but I feel like I'm going to become a tips channel because I want to help people. That's like me. I just want to, you know, I'm learning the game. I want to teach you the game. I want you to like, if I get to level two, I want to bring you from level zero to level one. If I get to three, I want to get you to three as fast as possible. If I get to four, I want to get you guys to five as fast as possible. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care. Like, this isn't a competition to me. I love Mr. Beast because I saw him in a podcast talk about how I don't look at them as my competitors. He's talking about other YouTubers. I look at them as collaborators. And I'm like, you know, that's a good point. That's a great point because we are all collaborators. We're all humans. Like, if we solve problems and we get paid or whatever like that, and people copy us, that means like we're exponentially helping humanity out because every problem you solve, somebody else doesn't have to solve it, and then they can solve a different problem, and then we can just the never ending compound effect of just like helping each other out. And okay, so random tangent. I still got a minute left before this video is uh, too long, but I don't like the idea that this is a zero sum game. I don't think YouTube is a zero sum game. I don't think that like Twitch and all that stuff is a zero sum game. There's a limited amount of attention, yes, but like that changes dynamically. And we have a lot of attention and as people, if the population goes up, I think we're speculated to hit 20 or 11 billion by 2100 or 2300 or something like that. It's just going to be more eyes. Cause like right now we have a massive population on the world. We have a massive population on the world. That's not even seen the internet yet. So why are we, we're competing like over this finite, uh, uh perceived finite, uh, supply of attention when it's not just, a finite supply of attention. It's a, it's an exponentially growing uh, supply of attention. And we all should be like already here established waiting for them so that they can get here and then we get their attention and then they can continue to grow the space and whatever. Anyway, rambling aside, hope this helps anybody. If you enjoyed that little tangent, if not, whatever, sorry. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. Have a nice day.